Last night, I went over to the shop and I got the up pipe tacked up for the WRX. I didn't do any fun, crazy B-roll or cool cinematography stuff. Uh, to be honest, it's just kind of hard doing it by myself, especially when I'm welding and I'm trying to do that thing. So like all I can really do is toss it on a tripod, but I'm going back over there later to do some more. So maybe I will get some creamy B-roll. But anyways, what is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Let me show you what we're doing right now. Let me show you what we got. Let me show you what we got planned because uh, we're going to get this WRX that much closer to running today. So let me say I'm pretty proud of myself here. I made an up pipe and our turbo is mounted and mocked up. And that is actually where I'm going to go with it. So this manifold isn't staying, as I've said before, I don't need to be, sound like a broken record. So this whole like high portion that sits like right in front of the inlet side, that'll be gone with our process west. I only have this tacked up right now because I don't know how close that process west manifold is going to sit to that turbo. So if I do need to adjust it or I do need to move it a little bit, we definitely can. But that's pretty, like for my first time making my own up pipe for a rotated kit, I feel like that's pretty good right there. We have ample amount of room for the down pipe. So this is just a three inch pipe with a V-band slit in it right now. And then this will slide down and we've got plenty of room for our downpipe down there that clears the AC line, clears the firewall. So I think honestly, this is probably the best spot for this turbo. Then the intercooler piping will just come out off the cold side right here, come out for, or I guess this would be the hot side, the cold side of the compressor, the outlet of the compressor, go underneath of the intake manifold, and then come down 90 straight over here to where our intercooler piping will be. So I'm pretty pumped for that. So to start things off today, since I'm waiting on my process west manifold to still get dropped off, we're gonna do some fuel stuff. So if you guys remember, I need to make one more fuel line for the feed side of the fuel system from our fuel filter down there, boop, right there, to our Y fitting right here. So I'm just gonna make a 90 degree dash 8AN line that goes down there to probably a straight or a 45 degree fitting. Not quite sure yet, we'll play with it. We'll see what we wanna do, we'll see what we find, we'll see what we like, and we'll get our uh, fuel system done for the feed side. Uh, so I've got the fuel feed hooked up. As you guys can see right there, the feed goes down, wraps down to our fuel filter down there. Now, while I was in here, I also did a couple other things. I hooked up the heater core lines, uh, removed my cylinder four cooling mod, capped off, I need to get some more caps, capped off one of the lines that goes to the throttle body because we're not gonna run cooling through the throttle body, removed the crossover tube because we're not gonna use that. I'm just gonna have to get my own fittings to be able to do the block breathers to be able to connect them up. And then while I was over here, I also clocked the turbo properly because whenever it comes to clocking a turbo, uh, what you want, you want the oil feed to be like facing up in the oil drain to be down so that way it'll gravity flow down through it'll lubricate the chra go through the return and then go back into the bottom of the head i have the iag dash eight i believe it's the dash eight no dash 10 oil return fitting it's the an one now instead of just the stock little tube that comes up so sick pretty happy with that. I need to add the external wastegate onto that up pipe right there, but let me grab it real quick, actually. I've got this little portion of the down pipe on there. Uh, it's just set in there right now. It's not tack welded or anything like that, just so I could figure out where I wanted to put uh, the external wastegate. So at first I was going to put it like up here just so you could see it and whatnot be cool. But then I was like, ah, that's really close to the engine and the transmission. So I was like, uh, it's probably better to put, just put it down there. So I got it marked on the up pipe down there in silver because silver is the only sharp color that I have for some reason. So when we go to the shop, we can get that tack welded up, get that tack welded up to make sure our external wastegate's going to clear everything. Woo! I need my manifold to literally do anything else. I think I'm just going to meander around in here and try to figure out where I want to mount stuff like the fuel pressure regulator, the boost controller, all that kind of stuff. So I'll just get, I'll give you an update when UPS drops off the manifold. The manifold just got dropped off. It's the prettiest thing I've ever seen. We're like three hours in the future and oh my God, Josh, I'm coming for you, baby. The sheer beauty of this engine bay is beautiful. I absolutely love it. So uh, I did clock the turbo a little bit more just to be able to clear the manifold, just a hair. Um, so I think right there is just gonna be perfect. It's just gonna be absolutely perfect. So uh, I do have that 45 degree four inch tube. I'm gonna cut that real quick just to kind of mock it up a little bit more. We're still in like the mock up phase of like, all right, this is what we're doing with this, this and that. So a lot of it, I don't want to final fab anything or final weld anything until all of this has kind of been sorted out. So now that we have the process West, Man oh, it's not bolted down, I forgot. Now that we've got the process West manifold on here, let me actually grab that tube, let's get it cut and let's test fit. I need to tighten down that 
V-band on there because I did clock the turbo a little bit more. So, oh, dude, it looks so good. It That looks so freaking good. I love it. Tighten out the V-band. This is the tube, so we're going to cut this a little bit. We're just going to start with little increments first. So, honestly, I think I want to cut it probably about there because that's going to bring all this back. So, Sharpie. This is difficult with one hand. So, right about there. We'll start with cutting it there and see how it looks. I have all the majority of my fab stuff at the shop, so it's a little difficult here. Yeah, do that piece by hand. Let me, uh, let me edge break this real quick. Still a bit too long on this side, like way too long, because if I grab my filter here, and I put the filter up like that, you guys can see for the filter to be able to clear, we need to cut it way up there. So, cut again on the silver line. I'll spend 20 minutes edge breaking it like I just did on the other side, and then we should have our intake done. Dude, I am seriously so fucking proud of myself right now, okay? And don't let people take that away from you if you're ever proud of yourself. Even if it's something small, okay? This is big for me. And I... I'm proud of myself, let me just say that. Dude, I am I'm fucking doing it! I'm doing the thing! I built an up pipe, I built an intake, which fucking and it fits that, that's the big thing for me is it fucking fits everything fits and it fits beautifully look at that perfect clearance good clearance between this guy and the manifold good clearance between the turbo everything is solid clearance there's good clearance for the intake nothing's touching over here the one tight spot that i will say uh, which i think i can just bend this uh ac line is right there they're not touching but I think I can just bend it up a little bit to get it away from that downpipe. I mean, I could also rotate the downpipe to kind of get it away from there and then have it Y back down or something, but I kind of want to just have it go like straight down like that. So I think I'm gonna try bending that AC line, but dude, serious, I'm so proud of myself for this. Like if you guys have been around the channel since the start, you guys, I, I struggled doing injectors. I struggled doing an oil pan. I struggled doing all of this stuff. I built a rotated kit. And I'm not, a, like, it's not fully welded out yet. I still got to bead roll some stuff, but like the kit and caboodle of shit's there. Like. I did this and it's all just been me so far building it, which is cool I don't know if I'm gonna be the one to fully weld everything out because I still don't have a proper back purging setup And I would like all that back purged um, if not I do have a welder who can do it for us and just fully weld everything out So dude, it looks so good. I have to go to the shop here in a little bit Someone's coming to pick up the seats out of that 07 STI I parted out So I'm kind of hanging out here at the house anyways until he comes to grab that stuff So while he's doing that I'm gonna jump back in the engine bay I'm gonna get the WRX's throttle body swapped over to our process west Start figuring out this uh, air oil separator and some other stuff for mounting and like smaller locations of things now that I've got kind of the intake, the turbo and that stuff in there. So back to it, man. Let's, let's keep fabricating and building cool shit. Got the AOS mounted up in here. Uh, I had to modify that pitch stop bracket that comes with the IAG kit if you buy that a little bit just to make it sit on the left side of the manifold so that way the right side will clear the intercooler piping that's gonna go over here. Um, dude, it's looking solid, man. I, a part of me kind of wants to take off the AOS and strip all of the black coating off of it and polish it to kind of match the intake, the intake manifold the turbo a little bit. I need to get a turbo blanket ordered for that guy. Uh, but like I said, we're gonna go to the shop here in a little bit and we're gonna do some more welding and bead rolling. I need to bead roll this guy and then the intake's pretty much, and then the intake's just done at that point. Uh, I need to tack weld the V-band connection to the downpipe because I don't wanna start building the downpipe yet until I have that tack welded so that way I can kinda do it piece by piece to figure out where I'm going with it. It kinda sucks the fact that I have all my welding stuff at the shop. Dude, it's so dark out. I am so tired of winter time. It gets so dark so quick. Here, let me turn this off. The lighting actually might be better. Oh my God, it actually looks better. So uh, we'll go to the shop. We'll tack weld that stuff up, get some more stuff taken care of. Dude, it's fucking, I love it. I got the white STI warming up. The dude picked up the seats. Uh, so now, jet over to the shop. We got some stuff to tack weld together, uh, some stuff to cut. We just have some more fabrication stuff before we can keep going on the overall fabrication. We got some stuff to bead roll. We got some stuff to do over there. So let's get to the shop. Daddy-o, baby boy, whatever you want to be. Ooh, it's so dark. There we go. All right, guys, so we made it to the shop. I have a couple things I need to tack weld up, like the external wastegate guy, the downpipe to the V-band there, 
And we also need to bead roll this guy while we're here. Uh, and then I also have to, and then also, I have to, oh, there's two more things. I gotta cut off the uh, nipples on here for the old coolant bypass. And then the last thing that we gotta do while we're here is bend a piece of exhaust hanger around this pipe. And that's going to be the support rod or the support piece for the up pipe. And it's gonna connect to the engine that way, which I should have some of my spare parts spin right there. So uh, I'm just gonna zone out, toss some headphones in, listen to some music, uh, throw you guys on a time lapse while I go through and start doing a lot of this fabrication stuff. I really just like to focus when it comes to doing this because A, I'm still learning. So if I'm playing with a camera and trying to weld and fabricate at the same time, uh, I make mistakes. I've done it before where I've welded a, a flange to the wrong end of a pipe and it's just, it's easier for me to just focus on this. So let me throw you guys on a time lapse. Let me get to going here. I don't wanna be here too late either. So let's get to work. So I'm gonna wait on doing the support bracket. I was going to use an exhaust hanger and just kind of like form it around the pipe. Uh, I think for my skill level, I think I'll just get a piece of, uh, just a piece of like 304 stainless steel, probably 16 gauge, the same as this. Uh, trace around it so that way I can get the diameter of this onto that and then just make a bracket. I think that'll be the easiest way for me to do it. Over here we have the completed pile of stuff. So we have our uh, intake, I went ahead and I bead rolled the ends. I fucked up on this side because I used, I put this in backwards. It's my first time using a bead roller and I bead rolled the inside versus the outside. So I had to go back through. So the, um, the other side, I mean, you're not going to see the bead rolls and there is a bead roll on both, both ends of this, but, uh, good to know that there is an orientation for how these go in a bead roller. Uh, I went ahead, got our dump tube flange tacked up to the actual guy. So that way I can mock this up on the up pipe to see where we want to cut and weld this guy on there. Got the flange for the down pipe tacked on there. I put an X on here for where I was going to put the O2 sensor, but I think I'm going to hold off on doing that. Uh, no, I am not back purging these to tack them together. I, you know, I got penetration. Okay. I'm still learning to weld. Is this guy still hot? Eh, not really. And then uh, I also got the dump tube done. So I welded on, I just fully welded it. There's a little bit of sugaring on the inside because I did not back purge this. Uh, it's a dump tube. It shouldn't matter if anything comes out of this. It's just going to be shot straight at the ground. Uh, but you know, my welds are okay. I'm not going to sit here and tell you they're perfect, but trying a couple different techniques on this. So it's a learning experience. I'm trying different temperature or different amperage, uh, different amounts of temperature or pressure on the foot pedal, I guess I should say. Uh, how much wire I'm feeding in, the gauge of wire I'm using. I'm just experimenting with a lot of this stuff. I mean, it's a dump tube. It's not like it's going to destroy itself. Even if that little piece falls off, it's not the end of the world. We still have the dump tube on there. So, oh, and I cut off the, uh, the nipples for the throttle body for the flanges. So sick. This little pile of stuff is done. We can go back to the house. Now we can actually start figuring out how we want to route our downpipe. Uh, this piece just kept falling out of the flange whenever I had it bolted up to the turbo. So now it won't fall out. So sick. Let's get all this stuff loaded up. Let's jump back to the house and I'll probably get going on things in the morning because it's like 930 right now. So let me grab all that stuff. All right. So it's the next morning. Good morning, everyone. So I went through, I got all the stuff that we did last night, put back in the engine bay. Uh, I need to take it all back out now. So I need to take out the up pipe. I just mocked up where the external wastegate's going to go on it. We need to get that little tube that I welded the flange on, match that up to where I have it like lined up uh, and then kind of trace out the inside and cut out that big circle so that way we know where to drill and cut out the hole for the external wastegate dump tube. So I'm gonna get all this stuff taken out real quick. We're gonna get it pulled over to the bench, uh, get it cleaned up a little bit, and then maybe I should wait. So I'd like to do another piece of the down pipe. I think I'll wait to do that anyway. I don't know, fuck dude. It's hard, cause you gotta like measure stuff. I'm gonna do it one piece at a time. I'm gonna focus on one thing at a time. I'm gonna get the up pipe back out so that way we can figure out the external wastegate and get that on there. So let's just, let's get the up pipe out. Let's get the hole. We'll swing over to the shop here shortly again, tack weld it all up and then come back and keep going on this.
Sweet, so I've got the hole cut out for the dump tube or for the uh, external wastegate. I got my little lines marked right there, so it will go there. So let's grab that up pipe. Let's grab that little dump tube stubby guy. Tack weld these together. And then uh, we'll do one more final fit up and get everything bolted back up in the car. Okay, something happened. I fucked up, I messed up, okay? The wastegate's totally in the wrong spot, and I have absolutely no idea how I did this, but I somehow did it. Granted, it's fixable, okay? I just gotta cut the tack welds on the little elbow that I have on there, and then cut right below the wastegate, and I can just rotate that piece to get it to go where I need it to. Uh, let me show, I, to, I don't know how this happened. Uh, we were also playing with couplers to figure out what coupler we need, so I'm gonna order a 2.5 inch 90 degree coupler off of that. That's Samantha. So some, I meant for the wastegate to be on the backside of the up pipe, and somehow it, uh, it ended up on the front. I don't know how. So what I'm gonna do is just cut the tack welds that hold that little 90 degree, or that 45 degree elbow right there, and then cut right below the wastegate. I will mark like an orientation line for how it is now, so that way I know how everything goes back together. Uh, I can tack weld all that back together and get that wastegate. All I have to do is rotate that piece that I cut and uh, get it to face the backside. I just have no idea how that happened, if we're being completely honest. I don't know what the hell I did right there, but this is where I'm gonna stop in this video. I feel like this is really good progress. That's one thing I like about being able to do this, being able to build your own stuff, fabricate, make mistakes. Making mistakes like that is how you learn. Like in my eyes, like yes, I fucked up right there and I put the wastegate totally in the wrong spot, but it's a learning lesson. Like I guarantee you I won't do that again, but it's looking good. That looks like a proper rotated kit. So there's a couple things I need to fix on it, like the wastegate, we'll start building the downpipe in the next video also. And we'll then we'll start final welding everything. I'm gonna order the plugs today to be able to back purge everything so I can fully weld it all out. Uh, hopefully that'll get here within a couple of days, but dude, that looks absolutely killer. Like. I'm proud of myself on that, even if I fucked up once. I'm still proud of myself. But that is all I've got for you guys on this one. So if you guys like these like DIY fab type of videos and whatnot, um, I hope it instills confidence in you guys to be able to try this stuff also. Like you're going to make mistakes. I'm a perfect example that you're gonna make mistakes and that's totally normal, that's totally fine. That's how you learn, that's how you grow. Um, but if you like these types of videos, let me know down below. If that's the case, um, from here on out, I'll just continue fabbing all of my own stuff and getting more practice to be able to do this because being able to fabricate and build your own stuff opens so many doors. We don't have to rely on other people. We don't have to pay outrageous, like don't get me wrong, like fabricators deserve to be what they're paid. But as a consumer, it's, it's a lot of money to spend on custom fab stuff. So I'm gonna continue practicing. I'm gonna continue learning. I'm going to continue making mistakes. I will continue to share those mistakes with you guys. So that way you guys hopefully don't make the same mistakes that I do. So with that, that's all I got for you guys. If you guys like the video, you know what to do. Go ahead and hit that like button, turn it black, blue, green, yellow, purple, silver, sand, whatever color it turns for you. And if you're not already, subscribe to the channel and you wanna be one of these corners. No idea which one I'll put it in quite yet, but with that, I will catch you guys in the next one. So peace out, homies.